Uh, welcome back to the show. So what cereal uses the slogan, they are magically delicious? Again, what cereal uses the slogan, they are magically delicious? If you think you know the answer, please give us a call, 410-481-1300. And the caller with the correct answer will receive a gift certificate to Touche Touchette Bakery and Cafe in Elkridge, Maryland. Again, what cereal uses the slogan, they are magically delicious? Delicious. In the meantime, I'm going to continue my conversation with Craig Call, Rachel Payne, and Scott Hughes of VentureWeb Interactive. Uh, I hope you listeners out there have been enjoying it. I have. I've been learning from it. But there's some other things that I know uh, that are happening in the Internet and artificial intelligence. And so what are some of the things you see coming to the future? And how is this voice recognition? We have it with, you know, uh, uh, Siri, and we have it with uh, in-home voice recognizer boxes that Google does and Amazon does. So where is this this whole voice search, do you think, going? Right. Yeah, I mean, smart devices are is growing huge. And, you know, I think um, if I read correctly, Black Friday this year, you're probably going to see them being on sale, everybody. You know, you've got your Amazon, Alexas, and your series, and your, your home boxes, and um, Google, of course, being on top of that. And they've been refining their algorithms based on how you interact uh, with your voice to these devices for, for a while. Uh, and the one thing about artificial intelligence and the concept of machine learning is the more data that you have, the smarter it's going to get. And so they've been working on us and perfecting it for years. And it, it's always been kind of head-to-head now. I don't want to pick who, to, who a winner would be on it, but Google is, is obviously very smart. Uh, your tablets, your phones, everything else you can talk to, there, there's a key concept behind that, uh, that if you were to ask your phone, you know, what movies are playing in my neighborhood this week or uh, what food should I eat tonight, it knows to serve you um, – you know, what theaters are playing and what are the show times around you uh, or what are the local restaurants in, in your zip code. And, and so that concept is known as schema. And as we refer to in other ways like structured data, you're basically telling your websites in the coding that's on there what to expect, how the search engine can interpret your website. If this is an article, it's going to have a tag on it called article. If this is a recipe, it's going to say it's a recipe. If it's a video, it's a video. If you notice when you do a search uh, you know, on Google, look at the top bar. And it's going to say all, it's going to say images, videos, shopping, news, etc. Next time you do it, look at the order in which that is provided to you. If, there, if videos is before shopping, likely the search that you have provided, your query, is more geared uh, by engagement through everybody else who's used that device or, or done a similar query uh, to put you in, into videos or news or something like that. Uh, so the concept of, of structuring data, it, it's there. Uh, to provide you a better search experience, you know, that you're looking for. Uh, it, the search results themselves are going to give you extra information like reviews and so, ratings. So if I'm sitting, I'm just, if I'm out tr- between clients somewhere and I'm in, you know, Hamden or Bel Air or wherever, and I just go in and say, uh, Siri, what restaurants are near me? It will tell me what's near me. I don't have to go into the, the search engine and type what re- restaurants are near me? I, you know, yeah, absolutely. Google's probably a little stronger considering they have the mobile device, uh, you know, strategy over with with the phones and everything. Everybody's got an Android phone or, or an iPhone for the most part. Um, and, and that's going to tap in. It's going to know your location based where it's triangulating or your <laughs> IP address so, or something. Right, Alan, you bring up a very good point, And that's also part of our job is to put what, as, as he's referenced, this what's called schema. Schema is telling Google that, Okay, this is where this restaurant is, and, you know, or this is where you buy this size lumber. It's telling Google. So when you ask it that, Google's either a Google Home, Alexa Home, or or the Google uh, Search Assistant on your phone. Well, if I'm using uh, uh, Safari, for example, on the iPhone, it's doing the same thing. Right. So it's when you're when you're doing it. So that schema is telling Google, okay, he, here's my answer to his question. So schema is it has to be installed as code that's installed that we put into the systems that so they can be recognized by the voice searches. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about this one. It's so important now. 
uh, moving forward, if you're developing a website, if you've got content, you're doing your content strategy right, you're doing your social media, and you're still not ranking, maybe it's because you don't have your schema set up on there. You, you have to tell Google what you're searching for because that's exactly where search is moving to in the future. And you know, as I was saying, the artificial intelligence of, of Google to be so, able to determine what you're looking so for. So what is schema saying? It sounds like it's an abbreviation for something. It's uh, schema. I don't. I don't know if it has a abbreviation. It, it's. It's when you look at it, it you won't understand what it is because okay. it's. It's all computer code, gobble okay. Okay. type stuff. Um, you know. Uh, but it sounds like so. For example, if I'm standing in, in at the corner of Baltimore and Charles Street, in downtown Baltimore, mm-hmm. and I say what restaurants are near me, it's it. It could, no, by knowing where I am through the GPS, mm-hmm. and knowing. Uh, the the where I am, and if you have your if they have the addresses on their website and the locations and all that, it can actually tie me in to all the restaurants in the area. But it'll only be the ones that have the right information on their website that it can be picked up from. Your your restaurant could upload a menu, and your menu would be tagged you know, as such, right? And you could have individual items on there. You can, I think Google actually does this now. If you look at a restaurant, ones that have schema on their website and say, here's your menu, they'll add it to the top bar when, when you've specifically typed in that restaurant. And you can look through and you can browse breakfast, lunch, dinner, desserts, drinks, anything that you want uh, because they've gone through the process of saying this is what this – is this is what you know it, it's it's a vocabulary that search engines can interpret uh and and they know how to display it and, and they previously it was referred to as uh, rich snippets and i believe google insists on calling it rich results now uh so it's just making it a richer experience <laughs> so that's search. why when you go in and search search uh, uh uh a restaurant near me and you go on it it'll show uh directions the menu the website, so you can click on. That's really what right. you're talking about. That structured data, Google will. They've been very good about it up until now, just automatically determining that information. Um, but now that the power is in our hands, right, and and we can tell it exactly what you need to see. You know, anything you can think of. Um, uh, there's a schema. I think schema.org probably has a full vocabulary listing of hundreds of different things that you can identify to Google. Okay. Uh, just want to remind the listeners that the trivia question, what cereal uses the slogan, they are magically delicious? If you think you know the que- answer, give us a call, 410-481-1300. Excuse me. That's 410-481-1300. I would really love to give away the gift certificate. I can't use them, so please, someone out there, give us a call so that you can use them. Uh, and uh, again, 410-481-1300. So... So that is that's a major and how how important is that going to be going forward exactly well according to according to the stats that amazon's touting and and, and google homes touting with the devices that that traditional searching the internet will disappear and then over the next decade that it will all be voice search um you know, which leads into what's beyond that is virtual uh, virtual reality. Uh, so one day we will all go, come home, put a helmet on, put gloves on, maybe some things that we put on our feet, and walk into the internet and start surfing. And you'll you know just as you see in sci-fi movies, moving stuff around with your hands. And I think it was a Minority Report with Tom Cruise where they're all, that screen are moving. Well, that's 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 going to be p- part of the next big thing. Well, I, th- I think also very quickly before. We- you think about restaurants. You're like my lab would have a you know, a restaurant chain could have a hostess, host or hostess that's actually a hologram, mm-hmm. not Probably. A, not a real person. <laughs> you, you if you do think that. if you, you think about that, you could do that. Mm. You go to the airport now. I think you can order from a tablet at one of the restaurants in there. You right. Know, you never have to interact with anybody. That's right. You go in. You sit down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go to restaurants uh, locally here, and you can actually go on there. They have individual. TV screens, and you can go and pay your bill right then and there, and you can make take your order. And yes, there it's again, it's using the uh, uh, electronic media to replace humans. <laughs> but yet, every time we we find a way to replace humans in one area, we find just so we know we find other places that they need to be. Uh, you know, we replace them 
in in print and all that and the the shrinking uh, uh, traditional media. Yet alone, uh, Google's now one of the largest employers around because they've gone from one media to just like you did, Rachel, starting starting in printing mm -hmm. and going to uh, 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 going to the digital marketing. I do have a caller. I don't have his name. Uh, uh, who's there? Hello? You there? This is Caitlin. Yeah. Caitlin, thanks for calling. Very quickly, because we're just about out of time, you have the answer to the trivia question? Yeah, Lucky Charms. Absolutely correct. Uh, if you'll hold the line, uh, I'll put you on hold, and uh, Billy will take all the information. All right, thanks. Thank you for calling. Uh, well, we're out of time. We're going to end it that way. First of all, I want to thank all three of you, Greg, Rachel, Scott, all for being here from Adventure Web Interactive. And just want to uh, mention they do all my uh, social media and, and marketing. I want to thank them for doing They do a great job for me, uh, and they'll do it for you, those people out there. Uh, how can a listener reach Adventure Web Interactive? Um, AdventureWebInteractive.com is probably the best way. Call us at 410-788-7007. Um, again, that's 410-788-7007. And, of course, AdventureWebInteractive.com. And there's, we have a lot of really good videos to look at. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. I also want to thank my producer, Billy Goheen, uh, for running the show. My videographer for the show tonight is uh, uh, ah, Larry uh, from LW BizFlix. Thank you for doing that. Please join me next Tuesday at 6 p.m. when I will have my CEO Spotlight show. Where I'll be for featuring four area business owners. Uh, look forward to having you then. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors. If you need to reach me, give me a call at 443-977-4500 or visit my website, alanhirschadvisors.com. This has been AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM.